Hello, everyone. Nice to see you here. Thanks. I seem to have some trouble connecting to the to the notes to our notes. Is it on? Ah, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, you, you have trouble connecting to to what? To the, to the to the code EMD, but it's it's uh, it's good. It's good. It's uh, it's res it's it resolved itself. I, I have okay. problems like I this. I will share the code e just in case on the chamber. Yes. But and and oh. we can we can start yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Eric had the same problem. Eric had the, had the same problem uh, just a minute ago, but now it's good. Okay. Okay. 
So it's all there. So please, please go and visit. Um, so, so we start. Do you want to do it, Alexander, or do do you want me yes. to just start? Yes, yes, yes. Let's let's do it. Uh, let me do it uh, for this time. Uh, so thank you, Pascal, for for handling uh, the slides for for this session. So hello, everyone. Uh, this is a meeting of the LPM Working Group of the ITF. Uh, oh, so next slide. Can I move the slides? No, next slide, please. Yes. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, to thank uh, everyone that is here and our AD. It is always a pleasure to have our AD uh, uh, very helpful and very very responsive in the meetings. So thank you, uh, Eric, uh, for this. So uh, this is uh, an official IETF meeting, and as such, all IETF uh, policies apply. Mm -hmm. So this is now the note well that uh, outlines all of them. So please read it carefully, and uh, you know be aware of all the BCPs that are listed here. Um, and so you have uh, rules for the APR for you know, code of conduct and all that. So uh, please, um, uh, you are uh, you know take take them into account. So, uh, okay, I can change the slides, I think, yes. So as a reminder, uh, uh, we are taking minutes at the uh, CodeMD link that is uh, that was provided uh, in the chat, but it's also uh, in, the, uh, in the slides. So, uh, you know, we, we are taking, everyone is taking notes. I mean, I, I'll be taking some notes and, uh, Traditionally, we have uh, uh, Anna, Sergio that are taking notes, Pascal, uh, and of course uh, Dominique. But uh, please, uh, you know, uh, take uh, do participate in the Dominique taking. Uh, so this meeting might be recorded. I'm not sure if the, it is always recorded now on MeTeco. I think yes, of course, yes, it is. Uh, so it is recording. Everything is recorded, uh, and your presence is locked. So uh, for the agenda, so this is an agenda bashing for today. So if you have any modifications, please uh, say now. So we'll start with the administrativia and a review of the data model reviews, uh, also NBIUT uh, feedback and a presentation from Laurent about the device identifiers and then a discussion on the LP1 rechartering. Uh, so yes, sorry. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, any any item that you would like to to add or or change? None. So yes, we can. Yes, yes, for the typo in uh, Mr. Laurent. Uh, ah. so. ah. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, in, the, uh, in, in the minutes, it will be fixed. It is fixed actually. I just typo when I copy. Oh. I I find it cute like this. I'll try to, to use it from time to time, just to see. See, it reminds me of some uh, cartoon, you know, with, with a little white dog, but. <laughs> yes, unless, uh, unless Laurent kills me after that. But, uh, you know, anyway, uh, so um, yes. And uh, before moving forward, I would like also to, um, to, uh, to 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 ask for approval of the minutes from the last time so the minutes were uploaded in the data tracker um so uh, do you have any corrections or anyone has any any additions to 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 add to to the minutes from the last time none so we consider the minutes uh, from the last time approved so for the since the last time we had two action items uh, and both are related to the Sigfox uh, draft. So the uh, working group last call for Sig over Sig uh, over Sigfox, and Shepard's review for Compound AC. Uh, so the working group last call uh, was started. So Pascal, uh, yes, yes, I, I just launched it actually. Um, mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I saw that at least one of the authors already answered to the call for IPR. So usually that's part of the shepherd, but we save time if we, if, if we call for IPR just now. So I see Atana has a question. Yes, Anna, please. Go ahead, Anna. Yes, 
have uh, sent the IPR mail last week and I received all the answers. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so, so you were you were hired. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. So, so all good. Sorry, sorry. Yes. No, no, but that, that's actually an excellent point. And um, thank you, Anna. And um, so the shepherd review, the shepherd review of uh, for the compound deck. So I did the review. Uh, that good news, as I promised. Um, so I have a couple of questions. I, I have one questions which I asked to the uh, to the authors on which I. Um, uh, so I, I I I have not received all the answers to the IPR review. Uh, so the answer that I have received are, of course, uh, on public. Uh, I think Juan Carlos, I have not seen his answer. Uh, so I will relaunch that. And uh, so this is uh, this is one point. And the other point is about Yang Doctor review. So because the sh the, the Shepherd uh, review for the Compound Act, uh, I mean uh, uh, for the Shepherd review, uh, it it contains a Yang document. And uh, so this is, there is a question like, has it been reviewed by a Yang doctor? And the answer is no. Then it, it's not like a big change to the, to the like, I mean, it's a quite straightforward uh, uh, Yang model. So here, and that's probably a question to Eric, would be, uh, do I publish my Shepherd review, Shepherd review with the uh, no? to this one and leave it like this or uh, do we i mean i my my so my initial feeling would be to to put it like it no it was not uh, performed but it is a very straightforward yang document so uh, and i have compiled it with piang so i mean it works right so that's that like the, the it, it's it's not a big deal for me but anyway i mean in in uh, in the shepherd review do i write it like this like no i do not uh, so it was not reviewed but it is a straightforward document so probably it's not a blocking point or do we go and ask for a review at that time so one thing alexander you at first, the shepherd write up you can have multiple versions, right? So you can update it pretty much like any document. So that's uh, that's one point. Uh, but it may be easier to come to be sure that with the author that everything is fine before writing it. Ah, okay, okay. So so you want me to send the the review to the to the to the authors? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that I mean, right after, I mean, IP1 is a small group, right? So I, I prefer yeah. to make it more informal and more efficient. So simply, you, you put the list in CC, right? Because it's a working group document. Um, okay. You may want unicast to the authors, but copy the working group and you say, yeah, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, uh, and they should do it, right? The shepherd is really like you are shepherding a herd of, of uh, lambs, right? <laughs> so you are the, the shepherd, right? So guide them. Uh, uh, because it's, I mean, the new format. I followed the, the 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 description in one of the links. I actually had a little bit of hard time finding that, uh, but finally I found that uh, the, the like the, the new template. And uh, um, because there is no abstract, like in the past reviews, you needed to write a little bit of an abstract what it's all about. So I was a little bit afraid I missed something. Uh, but I'm going to publish it, and then maybe uh, you know you can you can say, hey, Alex, you missed this one. But I mean, I, there are no problems. Like just to like spoiler alert, like there are no problems. Everything is really in, in good shape, and the authors did a good a good job. So uh, it, the only really, and there are there are also implementations out there, so it it looks really good. So the only point was about the Yang thing. But I'm going to write this uh, what I just expressed, and I'm going to send that to the mailing list. And I'm waiting for the IPR answer from Juan, Car uh, Juan Carlos. I think maybe someone else is missing, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to double check that. Mm -hmm. So that's the Shepherd review for the Compound Act. Um, and with this, uh, so we have, of course, like the, the, the traditional milestones that were updated, but like it's it's all uh, you know, following its its course of action. And uh, then on the document advancement, 
so we have, uh, uh, I mean, like things are advancing well. Uh, today we're going to be talking, Laurent is going to tell us more about the Young Data Model, the, the latest updates, and uh, and Anna on the ship over NDIoT. Uh, and uh, yeah, basically that's the, the these are the big, uh, 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 the big points here. And uh, do I talk about the rechantering now, uh, Pascal, or uh, we we leave that for the end? Well, we we could delay it to the end of the call. I mean, the, the, the story has not changed since last week, since two weeks ago. We have not discussed it much, but so I'll just push you know the item in the if we have time left, if somebody wants to jump in to, to ask for something specific. Soon enough, we, we will start producing some text. So I'd like to have the main items uh, in mind. So let, yes, let's discuss at the end if we have time. OK, perfect. OK, well, and, then, then, uh, then uh, it's all for, for the, for the administrative part. And uh, 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 Anna, yes, go ahead. To vote for background for the six folks draft, uh, Pascal sent today the last call. Do we need some reviewers? We always need some reviewers. I mean, the last call means you know anybody uh, should in the group I mean, who can uh, should review and provide comments. So effectively, yes, we we need uh, reviewers. Okay. Sure. So, does there somebody that wants to review it? Hmm. I, I will provide a review. I, I'll ask Juan Carlos as you know, as the next uh, Sigfax to provide this review as well. But we'll see. You. But please jump in. I mean, it's not a very big draft. The technical complexity has moved to the compound act, the most piece. And the, the compound act is already reviewed. As I said in my mail, since we did that call of compound act, that was version one, compound act is now version six. So it makes a lot of sense to do, you know, a new path and compound act just to make sure it's still okay. But, mm -hmm. uh, Yes, the Sigfox graph itself is not that complicated because the, the main trick has gone to the back. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing also a, a more detailed review of the of the compound back. Probably I'm, I'm, like it, I'm going to push it diff, uh, separately from the uh, uh, from the shepherd review. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if so that is, go ahead. Yeah. go ahead, Pascal. Oh, I was just saying if if it's you know the, the the next item, but we don't have slides. Is Laurent to give us some news on on the young data model? So Laurent, do, do you want to speak and give us news? Uh, yes, I can give news. So I uh, answer to all the. Uh, so the, all the comments that we we have and uh, for the document from VIG. So maybe I, I made a, a mistake because I just click on the grid and I answer to all the uh, area director, but I don't I don't understand really what how it is display, display because sometimes I see that everything is blue or green and there is still a red. Uh, a red part by the young doctor, and I think I, I answer to it. So uh, for me, it's uh, we have just to wait for uh, the change of color or some comments. But uh, I don't see what to do more for for the document from my side. I think you are correct. Uh, now, the change of colors is not automatic, right? Uh, it, it needs basically a, an AD needs to click somewhere and change its position. So, in this case, this is Rob Wilton. 
uh, which is, by the way, a colleague of Pascal and mine, uh, based in the UK. So I, I probe him this morning, hey, look, your discus point, the blocking point, you have provided an XML uh, instantiation example. So it should lift uh, its discus. Uh, I did not check this afternoon, but maybe he has already done it, but uh, I've not seen it. And then it will change the color. Um, and then basically the next step for the small details about the process, if you want to know, it, it, once everything is green, it's up to me basically to physically change the state and say approve. But typically what I'm doing there, I'm checking for all the other comments, even if they're not blocking, if I think they were sensible, I check whether they've been applied into the document. And I've already done it partly, and I've seen a lot of change. So you mostly uh, follow most of the comments as well. So as soon as Rob is acting, and it should be very easy for him, right? OK, the example there. Now we only need to check whether the XML instantiation is correct XML. I don't know how to do it, to be honest. But somebody else will do it later in the RSC editor. Uh, then I say I change the state, and it's done. It's sent to the RSC editor, right? So if you are confident everything is fine, and I'm confident as well, uh, it's you have nothing more to do. Uh, just okay. a tip for other times, if you have another draft which stays with a couple of red, red little square, right, for the ballot, um, ADs are not able to follow all the drafts all the time, right? So you can't, after one day or two days, you contact the AD by email saying, hey, I changed my draft. Uh, do you want to review your blocking discus point? When well, you say politely, right, and blah blah, hmm. uh, because I mean, he doesn't know your document has changed. Hmm. Yeah, but it's what I did. I answer personally to all the AD, and I give the reference to the new document and the new younger data model. Okay, then that's perfect. So, uh, hmm. I, I think it's a matter of hours or day, right? Yes. I hmm. think it will be approved before the end of this week. Okay, perfect. So, hey, I mean, that's really good. I mean, we are progressing, so that's great. The the next item, Anna, is same thing. If you can tell us about where you are um, on, on your reviews, then BIOT. Uh, the discussion with the 3GPP, and maybe I, I'll give some words there. Go ahead. I'm not hearing Hannah. Sorry. Um, well, I, I, we have received two answers from, uh, Sec direction, sec security director, directory and ops directory. They are green. I thought you have launched the 3GPP liaison, but we have not any input there, not in my side. So for the moment, I, I have nothing to do. I don't know if Eric has something more. Well, Eric. <laughs> basically triggered me to write okay. Okay. A, a, a letter for 3GPP to let yes. them know that we have this draft pending review. And so the, basically the document has the notion of, you know, the target date before uh, this document goes to the uh, ISG, uh, asking comments and review, and notifying that we have these informational pieces in the document and, and the start, uh, start track the piece as well. So the normative piece as well. I did not see any answer to this document, Eric. So if you have any other news, but it was No, nothing new. So. Honestly, I will not expect 3GPP to give a reply uh, quickly. Uh, maybe I'm a bad face, right? So I hope that I can send corrected and they got some, oh, that's nice, interesting and everything. But I, I'm not expecting any reaction, but at least we've been in touch with them. We have put a liaison, so we, we cross all the T and we put a dot on all the I. Everything is fine. 
uh, the last call, the, working, the ITF last call is over uh, end of this week. Uh, so my intent is indeed to put the document on the ISG ballot of the 27th of October, which is the last one between before IETF in London. Just to give you the timeline. And indeed, the two director reviews are quite, quite positive, so that's nice. Do, do you think that is a good idea to contact directly the person of 3GPP that will review the document? His name no, was no, Lionel. Uh, uh, yeah, if you know him personally, you can do it. It's, it's not uh, Lionel that will do the review, right? He is basically the liaison. So uh, outside yes. Gonzalo, right? Uh, yes. Send the liaison statement to the 3GP is catch by uh, Lionel, and then Lionel dispatch it, and we are no more in CC, or, I guess, uh, internally to 3GPP. And then the, the reply, if any, will go the same way. Uh, okay. If you know Lionel by any kind of means, yes, contact him, but else I will not do it. No, no, I don't know him. No. So, so, so I wait. Don't do anything. It's Everything yeah. is in, uh, in control. Yeah, okay. Uh, thanks for asking. Okay, and I guess we are a little bit ahead of time, by the way. Uh, this typo in this slide as well. The, the next item was supposed, supposed to be at 5.30, 4.30. And so this is pretty much now. So Laurent, if you want to jump in with the device identifier. Okay, can you share the slides? Or? I can do it for you if you want. I mean, you, you could as well, but let, let me share and give you the ball. Okay, I'm sharing okay. as soon as it's sharing. Yes, I'm transferring to okay. you. You should you should have control. Yeah, well, have the end. Okay, so this will be not so new because it's something I already presented during the last uh, ITF meeting. Uh, it's to discuss, I think it's something very important now, but we have almost a, a young data model, is to uh, work on uh, device identifiers. So just to state the, the problem, uh, right now in yellow, in fact, it's what we have developed uh, in the young data model. It means that we are covering only what is specified in RFC 8724 and 8824 which means how we define the rules. So it's what in, we can call a set of rules, but that's all. We don't uh, allocate this set or identify, uh, associate this state of rule to a device. Uh, so that's something that we will need to do. And here I just uh, do what we, we, what we have represented right now. It means that we, when you, we use uh, this young data model either from the core of the app to get the rule from a database, or we have also the possibility to uh, establish a communication between two instances of, of chic and to modify the, the rules. So the uh, plain line, the plain line with two arrows means that here we don't have constraint in transmission. And the dotted line means that here we can have to cross a, a constraint network, and here we have to take care about the size of what uh, what we, we, are, we are sending. So one thing that is important, is especially right now in the core, but maybe also in, in the device, is that we have to identify the, to whom belong this uh, set of rules. So we have to, to find a way to, to do it. So there is different way that exist. So I, I take what I know, for example, OpenCheck is using, uh, you have two, two, communication, two possible communication right now. It's either to use a UDP tunnel over the internet. And so uh, a device in that case is identified by the keyword UDP, then you have the IPv4 address or IPv6 address, and then you have a port number to, to join the device. Or you can join the device through a LoRa network, and in that case, you have the keyword LoRaWAN, and then the device ID of the device. 
So it's something that uh, is just specified for OpenShift. We have something that is more generic that has been defined in RFC 9039 that say that we have a URN that is uh, defined and say we have a, a device and this is a MAC address and then we can put the dev UI uh, at the end. So it's what we are, I know now, but is it uh, enough for what we expect to do or, or not? For example, when we have MAC address, we don't say which technology we, we are using, which means that uh, normally the MAC address at the end have to be unique. I don't know if Laura One will always have unique uh, dev UI, so maybe it could be a, a problem. So how, so the, the open question is, how we will represent a device in uh, when we we want to extend the current model and put this uh, this information. The second point is that if we uh, do it, do we uh, do we have to do in a constraint way? So for uh, for me, there is two things we we have to study in the architecture. The first one is what do we put around the young data model? So we have to uh, include IDs. So for example, on here, I try to cover all the case we, we saw before. So if we have point-to-point -point communication, maybe we don't need identifiers because it's point-to-point. -point, so we know that it comes from the other end and we send it to the other end. So here we don't need IDs. What we are working right now is a start topology with uh, uh, LP1's network. So what we need is that the core can identify to which device he has, uh, the rules belongs to. So here we need one, uh, one identifier in, uh, in added to the set of rules. And for the case of the mesh network, so Ivan published a, a draft uh, some time, a long time ago, where we can have uh, both. It means uh, device ID in one side. And since we can talk to other devices, we need also to have a core ID. Pascal? Y yes, Laurent. Uh, I don't necessarily agree that even in P2P, we can live without identifiers. I believe that we do mm -hmm. need identifiers because you, for instance, say you have this IPv6 device and it does autoconf and address. And that really does not tell you what device that is. And so the, on the same network, another device, which is kind of different, right, operates on very different rules, might also autoconf and address. They will be on the same slash 64. How do you know which one is which one? Hmm. So, so the, okay. the IP. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's no more P2P. For me, P2P was you have the already uh, established link and you work on that. but. Of course, if you want more dynamicity, then we we have to to cover either the star topology or the the mesh. And I think that what we have to do, in fact, is to target the mesh, and this way we can cover the other cases. Okay. If your point is let's do what we do for the mesh everywhere, then we'll be in sync. But otherwise, I mean, I, I would not believe hmm. what. You what you wrote about P2P. Now, the, the hmm. way we do it in the PPP draft is we effectively exchange the set of rules as part of the uh, end check, if you like. Um, so basically, the device who wants to talk will express the URL of the rules. That it, that's what's proposed in the draft. Right? It's just a personal submission. But it does express the set of rules on which it operates. Um, and so, so the other one has to accept those rules and say, yeah, I'm, I can work with that or I cannot work with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I do think that would be a negotiation. Like if, you know, the one has multiple set of rules it could operate with um, and the other has a different set and they could work out an intersection. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's not really the device ID. It's more the capability, right? I don't really care who you are. As long as you speak French, I can speak French to you. So it's more what kind of what which rules would you support rather than who you are really? You see, okay. So who you are is I think that's another point, but it's very important, and 
I think we, we have also to add this in, uh, to specify it in the architecture, because right now it's an, I don't think it's specified. Yeah. And uh, that's very, very important to, to know also what are the capability of uh, uh, the, the device or, or the other end you are talking to. And uh, right now I don't know how to do, to do it. So even the young model will not, the current young model, that a model doesn't uh, cover this. It's just a set of rules that we have represented. Right. Right. Basically, the PPP draft is like this, right? When you, when you basically establish your PPP connection, you have to negotiate the, the, the compression technique. So we have defined a new compression technique as being shake. And, and when, when you do that handshake, th there is uh, some room for data. And in the data, it's just a URL of the, 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 the model, basically the, the rules. Hmm. So the player has to go and fetch that rules and, and run it. Okay. Yes, so it is, the only capability is a chic or not chic. It's not I am a, I, 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 I am using this CDA or a matching operator. It's chic well, or nothing. Well, it's basically like I try to open a, a, a P2P, a PPP connection with you, and they say, hey, uh, I want the compression to be chic, so it's type two, and the URL of my rules is this. Now you, you, hmm. you look at that and you say, do I support chic? Uh, if I don't support chic, type two, I reject. If I support okay. type two, then I go and fetch the rail. Can I run with these rules? It might be that you can't because there is something hmm. in those rules that you just don't understand. You also have to say no. Now, if you can run, run with those rules, then you will say yes. Um, it's, it's okay when you can go and fetch rules. Hmm. Um, I'm wondering there are cases where I don't know. When it's an LP1 device, I guess the LP1 device would provide the URL of the, of the rules. So it's, mm. the yes, back end, it's I could yeah. always fetch mm. that from, from the internet. But is there a case where it's too hard? A case where the rules are expected to be preloaded on the other side? Hmm. But to co yeah, uh, I agree. So in that case, I think we, we are covering almost uh, this case because uh, if you have a new URL, then this URL can uh, point to a resource that contain uh, core conf data and this core conf data will be the, the rules. So, or, so, so it's... Yeah, so we need to document that in the architecture, yeah. I agree. Mm. But all I say in, in the PPP is you should get the URL or the URL and go live mm. with that. But but yeah. you need to say what to do with that and what you can expect at the other end of that URL. Mm. Yes, but I think uh, P2P is a subcase of the mesh that Carles also described. It's that we we need to to be able to have two nodes on a mesh that can exchange or be uh, exchange rule or manipulate rules and we need to identify this uh, uh, this device so i think uh, it's no, very no, important no. Yeah. so the, like like we said there are two things we need to identify right? once we have a, a point to point or point to multi point or whatever connection with somebody i have a connection i can talk to you right i have your ip you have my ip or something do I need your device ID or do I just need your rules? At which point do we need an ID? So that, that's a good question. And I, I am not so sure right now. And maybe that's the difference in my view from what I presented at, uh, during like ITF. So I think that maybe we don't really need to identify the device when we exchange a rule between two chic instances because we can maybe rely on layer two to do that, and but on the other end, when we go to a database and get the information, here we have to identify the, uh, which information we we need. So maybe I, I think I have another slide here. But yes, so that's but this one that say okay, we we do we need identify identifier between the device and uh, the two chic instance. So not so. I'm not totally convinced that we need one, and I think that if we don't use it and we rely on layer two, then maybe we will have a stronger security because we cannot cheat and you cannot access to something else. And uh, from the other side, do we need? Uh, so, I think we need something to identify uh, the rule and 
could it be URN? So that's uh, on how they are with, with their structure. That's something that the group, I think, has to answer. And this is very much the way the PPP draft presents it to us well. I forgot what I wrote in the architecture, nothing much because we never got an agreement. But yes, we, if we agree that basically the model that you have in front of you is, is the reference model, then we can, we can document it on the architecture. But we need to express what goes in the URN because at some point you need the URN which tells you this unique info, piece of information mm, that you yeah. need to. Yes, and from my point, point of view, 9039 is not enough, but uh, I would like people to, to review it and say if it's uh, okay or, or not. The, the other point I, that... Sorry, on, on your previous point, I mean, as you said, if you don't provide um, something for which protocol that is, you don't even know if you expect six bytes or eight bytes, and and if you have none of the I uh, triple E Max, but something different, how do you know what kind of MAC address, what kind of format you're going to get? So it looks it looks weird that that we have something without you know expressing the protocol. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Yeah, but since we have already a way to represent it, we have to justify. Uh, modification or creation of new formats. And even even 802.15.4, I mean, uh, uh, Carles is with us? Yes, Carles is with us. So so you have long addresses, which are 8 bytes, and short addresses, which are pad ID, device ID, basically 2 bytes, 2 bytes. And if, if you if you do that, then, uh, you know, it's, it's yet another format, it's just 4 bytes. And, and how do you know which one it is? Well, it's, it's very weird. And it's anyway, it's not a... Yeah, sorry, it's go ahead. If you rotate the max, it's not even mm. a device ID anymore. It's just mm. a top array ID, it's not an ID, it's more like an endpoint. Mm. My fear is more that, for example, if you have Mac and as you say, for example, in uh, you have four bytes in uh, in uh, uh, in 802.15.4, and you have six Fox that have also four bytes. Here you have a confusion and you don't know. Uh, and it's perfect. There is no way, if you don't know that it's a Sigfox mm -hmm. global, I mean, basically it can, only, it can only be a name if it's a global or unique address. And, and so if, if you rotate Macs, if you use short Mac, I mean, there are tons of cases where the, the, the Mac uh, can rotate and, and they won't in, indicate which device that is. To, okay. Yes, and so thanks. Thanks for bringing this topic. And I think uh, 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 Steve uh, he put a, a good point also on the on the mailing list. Yeah. To just a, uh, I, I will present it just after. Another point that we we got from the review of the young data models or the rules is that we didn't talk a little uh, of uh, access control on who is able to modify things and what can be modified. So I think we we have also to, to cover the, this point. And there is a suggestion in, suggestion in the review was to use something that I am absolutely not familiar with, but it's a network configuration access control model. We seems to give access to leaves and say uh, how to, who can modify it. So I have to look to that in, in more details, but maybe it's some interesting uh, approach. I don't know if it works well in a constraint environment, if a COMI representation, COCONF representation of that would be good or not. So it's something also that we, uh, we have to investigate. And the last point was uh, also when I published that on the mailing list, we got uh, a comment for Stephen Farwell that says that we have also to take care about uh, privacy. So that's something that I, I agree is something very, very important because we we are targeting devices that can be very intrusive. So we have to, to take care about uh, uh, privacy. 
I would say for me, it's more, it's orthogonal to uh, what we are doing right now because it's more in uh, the rule by itself that we manage the address that will be sent on the network. So I will just take the example of LoRaWAN that says that you do uh, hash with uh, the application session key. And so each, each time you renew your uh, join, then you change your your address and nobody can track you uh, using this. So, but it's more at the rule level than in the uh, young data model and the identifier in uh, the young data model has to be uh, uh, to point out which devices. But of course, we have to take care a lot about uh, privacy when we will design this. Uh, Laurent, it's something I studied, and I have to I have to look at my notes and what I did with that. But I remember uh, when I was trying to look at chic over a mesh at some point, I figured that, for instance, in the what we deploy in our own meshes, you know, for smart grid, the devices are mostly the same. There are very few sorts of devices, so the, the the rules are the same for hundreds of devices in one mesh, and you don't want to, to go and give a different set of rules to each individual device. You want to distribute the same rules and then just say you replace dollar IP by your IP or something. So, so having you know some pre-processing of the rules which will change some dollar or something into the real value. Some of those values depending on the network, some of the values depending on the device. So if the device knows his own dollar network and his own dollar IP, then he will instantiate his rules based on the generic rules implementing the dollar IP dollar network and changing everywhere or something. You see, you see the, the, the type of thinking that I have here? I'm, I'm yeah, clear. but, but we, we to be documented in, uh, I think in the architecture uh, uh, document. Uh, for me, what is important in that case is that if the core has this uh, allocate the address, maybe the device will need to get this address. And here it's uh, <coughs> purely in the, in the young data model, or it's uh, uh, the device may ask uh, what is uh, uh, the value of um, the yes the. Um, the device uh, interface ID, and this way you you can get it. Right. But but for me conceptually, it's it's more an optimization in the core that something that change a model. Yeah, I mean the resulting model of the instantiated set of rules mm -hmm. for that device will be effectively what you have described. I was just wondering if it's purely an implementation thing, in which case it doesn't go in, into any standard, or if it's something that we need to write somewhere, in which case we need to standardize something. You know, how to, to go from a generic set of rules which work for every IP, and then you have to put your own IP everywhere there is dollar IP, you know. Um, and, and is, is there anything that we should standardize or is it proprietary? If you really want to find the generic rule at some your hand, and the IP cannot be in there, it has to be dollar IP. You see what I mean? Yeah, but this go is not what I <laughs> uh, was talking about in this, this document. So it's something very interesting. But here is more how we identify rules when it comes, because even yeah. if you have this, you. You need to find the good rules when the packet, a uh, chic packet arrives. Yeah, first process. you need to find the rules, but then you need to instantiate mm -hmm. them. That's mm -hmm. the next step, basically, that comes after that. And if the rule is at the year end, if unless you have for each device which rotates its IP, you have a new set of rules at that year end, which is, <sighs> or uh, basically it has dollar IP in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, or maybe the URN has question mark, you know, uh, IP question mark, whatever. And then you have to pass them as parameter to HTTP or something. But but we have to design all the way. We can't yeah. just design. So I, cannot, uh, I, uh, I don't have the answer in life, but maybe we, we have to specify and quite discuss. And... Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So everything which is a parameter should be kind of isolated. And, and I guess we need, to, so that's my question to the group. Do we need to standardize that as part of this process of wrapping, basically you're wrapping the data model with information. And they believe that we we, know, we also need to notify the, the, the parameters in the roles that need to be instantiated for each device. And, and do, do basically the relocation, if I can talk this way, of the rule to that device. Just like when you relocate a code that you load in memory, you have to relocate every address to where it's loaded. Here, the same thing, you're loading those rules into this device. You have to change dollar IP everywhere to the IP of that device. Yeah, but we, yeah I, I agree. But for me, yeah, it's something important. But identifier is also important. I will, I will not know. Uh, yeah, I it's, will, it's... I have a discussion on that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. So I think so. I think that it's really uh, so. These are really super interesting questions, and uh, and uh, 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 so I love all this. Uh, and uh, probably the so that that comes uh, uh, in the, what goes into the architecture draft, and so what do we do in the rechartering? Uh, but I think maybe in the architecture draft. And uh, Laurence, thank you for actually putting up all these different points, and what also what Pascal said. So probably uh, we can do a short write-up in the like. Uh, um... Yeah, we need to agree on the mailing list first because we mm -hmm. said oh yeah. there is there is maybe a need of a device ID, but it's not entirely sure that we need it. And then mm -hmm. if we try to have one, we realize it's very very difficult because you can rotate your Mac and you don't know exactly the format you're going to use. And now it's not proven that you need a device ID. What I've seen is you need a rule ID. Mm -hmm. And so, so at least uh, on both hands know which rule to apply, but do they need to know an identifier for the other hand? I've not seen that yet. On mm -hmm. the other hand, the rules will need to be instantiated. So we have to discuss all those steps. But the, the, the need for an ID has two primes, right? First, it's not proven we need one. And second, we don't know how to build it. And apparently from what Laurent has searched, I mean, there is no cool way for us to, to build it. So, okay, do we really need it? I mean, that's the question one. Because soon as you start manipulating IDs, you get a challenge on privacy. As long as you don't manipulate ID, you don't have that problem. If you just manipulate the rules that you can speak, I can speak French to you, I don't know who you are. That's still okay. So, we need to document why we need an ID. That's, I guess, the starting point. Mm. Yes, yes, that sounds like a good, uh, actually, an excellent point, Pascal. When we ask the the question is to 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 first justify, like, to determine what is the problem we're trying to solve, because as you said, Laurent is starting with device ID, but or, uh, maybe it's a different thing. So, what are the properties of that different thing? And uh, once we once we describe that well, then I think that the answer is going to be very like, straightforward. Like, it's going to ah, okay. Well, we describe the. Yeah. the, the we probably need to look at the flow, right? Which is what I did for PPP. I looked at the flow. I said, hey, we need to establish a shake. So they need to agree to understand shake. Then they need to agree on which set of rules they have. And then they need to instantiate the rules because they have new IPs each time. And, and so mm. that, that's, why, that's why I have this, this model in mind. Now, the, um, and, and that doesn't require any ID. For, for at least for the flow, I understand. I, I, I don't need any ID. But on, on the other hand, you, you need to make sure that the rules that you're downloading are not forged. So certainly there is, it's not just the year end of where those rules are, but maybe some assurance that they are uh, original, that they are not, uh, they have not been touched basically and corrupted. So it's probably, it's, it's a signed thing that needs to be uh, some agreement on how you go and fetch them and ensure that they are correct. So it's not a simple thing, but it does not require yeah. any. Uh, sorry, I uh, maybe I should have asked uh, uh, the right to talk, but just to on this point, since uh, it's very difficult to uh, to have a, a signature or an authentication if we don't have a canonical format for rules, and thanks to Comai, uh, Corconf, we have something that is very very strict on. Uh, cannot change easily. So to have a signature on it, it's quite easy. 
so is there is there an issue to specify that the rule on the UN would be Korkov? Or is it perfectly okay? But uh, Korkov is not uh, a clear. It's uh, Korkov is a way to represent yeah, something yeah. that has been formalized in. But is I mean it's, it's basically one so form, the, one way to formalize it. Is it okay to make it the default standard for now and say everything is Korkov so we can actually secure it? Or, or should we open for other netconf? So for well, me, I mean, if I go back is, to, to this slide, point, Corconf is a different is a different thing. Corconf is the protocol. So the way to represent is either in JSON, let's say, on Cbor on, or XML. Once you you write down the the Yang data model, like the, the 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 expression of the Yang data model, and that expression is going to be let's say in Cbor. So you have the Yang to Cbor RFC, which is now an RFC. So you can actually serialize your Yang data model in a Cbor representation and this this gives you a canonical representation and i think this uh, canonical representation is more stable than a json or uh, xml because if you add a uh, space in a json or xml it will not change the uh, representation but it will change uh, uh, hash which is not the case with corcom because uh, uh, cbor is uh, you don't have space, you, you have a very strict format to represent the information. Okay, which is back to the question, is, it, is there a prime to say, oh, let's, let's use Korkonf to go and fetch it? Or do, can we make it the default and then if in the future somebody defines something else? Because basically, when, when you have this picture where the, the app goes to fetch the rules from, from you know, the server on the top right, I mean, if, if the server can be trusted, it doesn't prove that the server has the right information. It could have corrupted information. So it's much better to be able to check that the data itself that you're fetching from the server is correct. So for instance, if, if the device on the left can produce the key, uh, the hash, basically, you know, of the, the, the rules to be downloaded, and it's 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 obtained as Cbor. Then effectively, we we it's like when you download um, open source code, right? You download a new image of your uh, favorite distribution. You basically have the uh, SHA or whatever hash of the uh, the, the image that you're going to download. Now, when, when you, once you've downloaded, you can ver validate that the, the hash is correct. Same thing here. The, the, the device on the left, when he says, go and fetch this urine, it could also say, here is the hash of what you expect. And then the device on the right could get it from anywhere as long as the hash of what he gets fits. He's kind of happy that the, 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 the rules that he obtained are correct, right? Uh, and in, uh, Pascal, this is Rick. It also allows something like a CDN to or any kind of local device to host those rules, right? Yeah, yeah, which, which is the device effecti the de design effectively. Because if you have a factory, for instance, and, and you have tons of devices, sensors in the factory, you want a local server to own, to, to, to locally copy all the rules, right? That, that are, are implemented by all the devices. And then your switches, your Cisco switches, which talk to those devices will go and fetch the rules on that local repo. They don't, want to go to the manufacturer HTTP site or something inside the factory, usually you're cut off. If you're in the control network, you will not have access to the internet. So it's very important to have this capability to, to go and fetch the rules locally. So it has to be local urns that you can fetch. But having the switch capable to, to download uh, from the right and, and check you know, that it matches the hash that's obtained from the device on the left then we are sure we can start working. Because if we don't have the right rules, I mean, anything can happen. It's really, we really need to have the right rules. So, yeah, I mean, mm. I, I think we can write something based on what you have on this picture, Laurent, uh, in the architecture, if we agree on the basics that we just mm -hmm. gave. So I, 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 and, uh, very much, I very much the idea about the hash getting pushed, like like the, the device saying, "Hey, well, this is the hash of what I'm expecting." And yeah. Then, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, it's that safe space and uh, and basically allows for a, a, a nice bootstrap. So that that's good. That sounds. I mean, yeah. it sounds uh, nice to me. And 
and yeah, I mean, everything that is written here, it's already in some or other way, I think, in the architecture document. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's, um, I, uh, yeah, Pascal, if you can write up something. But, that, that, that yeah, I, 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 I'm not at all the, the ex conf guy or, or even the CBOR expert or anything. So what I can write is the global view of this. And then Alexander, uh, right. if you can please go down to, okay, there is what you get with the year end, it's this format and whatever Laurent said about, you know, the, the, the fact yes. that it's canonical and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I will need you to add some text here and there to make it, to make the picture correct. But basically the question is, can we yes. rely on CoreConf to be the default mechanism to go and fetch the rules? If we all agree that it is yes. and that the, the oh. format is seaboard, then, then we are very happy. Well, CoreConf was designed to work on Yang and, and, and Cibor. So typically, like the, the, the way you see this picture, CoreConf will natively work with that. And it yeah. will natively work with Yang, with the, with the Chic data, uh, with, the, with, the, um, with the data model of the Chic, uh, the Chic data model. So it, everything that, that, that we've been doing until now is going to work natively. So, it, so it's like the, the way that it will be a plug and play while working. From there, there are two things which can happen. I mean, as we know, we need to identify to, to update the rules for each device to put the IP of the device, for instance, if it's being compressed. Um, and so it can happen on the top right, in which case you need to run code on, on the server, which understands how to change IP with the real IP. So you need to, to provide question mark IP to the right. The alternate is effectively that uh, both the device and the app they understand question mark IP and they replace. And so, so my question to you is what do I write in the architecture? How do you instantiate the rule for that device basically? And I'm getting no answer. Maybe it's just because it's past the hour. <laughs> yes, it, it's past the hour. Maybe let's, uh... We can discuss this uh, over mail or, you know, like, a, I mean. Okay, let, let's continue. Let's mail. Go, let's, let's go mm -hmm. So Laurent, thank you. Big, big thanks for, uh, you know, starting all those discussions. And so um, let's continue on why, if, if effectively we need a real ID somewhere. And I, I'll start documenting at least this slide in the architecture and then work with Alexander about the exact uh, wording of stuff. And uh, then we'll publish a new version of the architecture. But for now, I don't feel at ease to talk about device ID. I don't see the need and I don't see, so I can't write it. We need to, to talk more. Okay? I agree, it's just to initiate the, the discussion. I have no solution. Okay, so thank you all for, for this great meeting. And uh, well, we meet again for the last time in two weeks. And after that, I guess we'll be getting ready for the IETF in London. So again, thank you all. Please, you, please in the next hour to go to the minutes and check that what you said is correctly captured. And uh, at the end of the day today, I will basically take the whatever is in the code EMD and push it as the minutes uh, of the meeting. So I will make my own pass on the text, but please, uh, you have an hour or two to, to, to visit it as well. Okay? And with this, many, many thanks, and the meeting is adjourned. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.